finally, there are university presses, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, and there are approximately a dozen or so in Canada, um, give or take a few. Um, all of them are distinguished, first of all, by some sort of formal association with their parent institution. Uh, UBC Press, you know, University of Toronto, Eagle Queens, they're all, they're all fairly obvious who they're affiliated with. They all have some, uh, they fall under some umbrella of the parent institution. Um, most importantly, they all have an approval board of some sort, and it's called, uh, it goes by various names. At UBC Press, it's the Publications Board. I think University of Toronto Press, it's the Manus Manuscript Review Committee. I'm not sure the other publishers, but it's the same thing. It consists of a number of academics from the parent institution who are usually senior scholars in a variety of disciplines, and <clears throat> they are you know, to, uh, they're the guardian of the press's imprint, if you will is their responsibility to make sure that all the manuscripts, all the books that eventually get published under this imprint have met uh, the, the sort of basic criteria for scholarly publishability. They've gone through peer review, they make a contribution to knowledge, etc. cetera. Um, <clears throat> these decisions are made most of the time on the basis of the peer reviews that are obtained by the publisher of the manuscript. Um, and so, a university press imprint, in Canada in particular, means that this book has gone through, has been assessed by other scholars, it's been deemed of sufficient scholarly importance that it merits publication, uh, that a board of independent scholars from di various disciplines have looked at this and, has been, and is satisfied that the peer review uh, has, has been done and it was fair and rigorous. In terms of your careers as academics, um, this university press imprint usually means quite a bit. This is kind of the currency, if you will, of tenure and promotion hiring in many disciplines. Not all disciplines, many disciplines. And so, especially in the social sciences and humanities, uh, publishing your book under the imprint of a reputable university press uh, will almost always be a benefit to your career. So that's important to know. Um, the primary mandate of university presses um, or at least the guiding principle, is that the, the books need to make a contribution to scholarship. Markets and profitability is a secondary concern, uh, which is good because the reality is that um, the vast majority of academic books lose lots of money. And uh, they sell in fairly small quantities to a limited number of people. And that is just the nature of the scholarly endeavor. And there's no shame in that. Um, that's just how it is. Uh, it's safe to say that if we were to rely on the invisible hand of the economy to see these books published, as certain federal governments in Canada think we should be relying on, uh, a lot of this work, 70, 80 percent, might not get published because they simply do not make money. Um, I would emphasize again that scholarly publishing differs from country to country and place to place, and so what we're talking about here is different in different areas. Uh, the states, they have a, a large number of university presses publish trade books, regional trade books. They have these kind of different criteria for peer review, et cetera. And then British publishers, which is dominated at the university press level by the two big ones, Cambridge and Oxford, again, have a very different sort of set of criteria and policies and procedures. So it's not really <clears throat> the same and it, you can't be translated across. I would also say one other thing, um, disciplines, in the social sciences and humanities, disciplines, departments, um, usually at attach a similar weight to book publication. But there will be people at this session, I bet, who come from disciplines where books don't really count as much. And uh, for instance, geography is a discipline that is, is fairly split because I think in part there are physical geographers that follow from the science tradition and the social sciences geographers who are more of a book discipline. And so you need to think yourself when it comes time to publish about what kind of publications matter. You need to find out if a book is going to count the same as a journal article or if it's going to count more. These are things you need to find out. 